Hi, this is Renee Hobbs, and today's date is Wednesday, April 11th. Uh, we won't be having a synchronous live class tonight because I'm here in Washington, D.C. Um, very happy about the opportunity to testify before the U.S. Copyright Office on um, a matter that's near and dear to me. Uh, it turns out when Congress wrote the Digital Millennium Copyright Act uh, in 1998, they included a provision that made it illegal to rip DVDs. You've probably noticed that if you ever tried to copy an excerpt from a DVD. They're, they're copy protected, so they can't be copied. But that actually is a uh, legal violation of uh, the First Amendment and of um, the copyright law itself, which allows users to make uh, excerpts of copyrighted material uh, for purposes of comment and criticism. Of course, that's essential for me as a media literacy educator. How can I critically analyze um, mass media and popular culture content if I can't make a copy of it, an excerpt of it, a clip of it, a compilation of it? So every three years I come here to uh, Washington DC and I testify before the Library of Congress and in the past they have granted an exemption. We'll see if I'm lucky enough for that this time. Um, okay, so let me talk with you a little bit about what I'm hoping uh, you're going to be doing this week as we as we move forward. Here we are at our class homepage, and uh, this week's theme, of course, has been um, terrorism as propaganda. You um, you got to see that amazing um, U.S. Uh, uh, veteran of wars in Afghanistan and Iraq talk a lot about the power of propaganda. Um, of course, um, I'm going to put this video in that spot right there <laughs> once I once I finish it. Um, but I, I I do hope that you take some minutes and make sure that you can answer these questions: What factors have contributed to the appeal of ISIS propaganda online? How do people access ISIS propaganda? How did ISIS recruit people from around the world? Why are some Americans sympathetic to ISIS? And what's the line between having sympathy for a terrorist group and actually supporting them? Now, what techniques does Jack Kirkham use in analyzing ISIS propaganda? And what's a doomsday cult? What's the difference between propaganda and brainwashing? Uh, and why would head camera footage be so useful for ISIS? If you can answer all of these questions, uh, then I feel confident that you are on track for uh, learning in COM 416. And if there's a question on this list that you can't answer comfortably, I suggest you go back to the readings and see if you can find the answer. Of course, most important from my point of view of these questions are these two. Uh, looking carefully at what Jack Kirkham does to disrupt your interpretation of the ISIS propaganda he analyzes is a really important thing to notice because he's being really strategic and intentional in how he shapes your interpretation of the propaganda with strategic verbal and visual devices. So be sure you can uh, comfortably explain that. And then of course, I do think it's important to distinguish between uh, propaganda and brainwashing. In the readings this week, you got a much better understanding of what brainwashing is. You should be able to differentiate that from propaganda. They are not the same. Okay, so um, let me introduce to you your next project. Of course, this week you are completing your LEAP 3 uh, projects. Um, just a small note on that. I guess I'll go... Um, up here to leap before I get to leap four, I should, let's close out leap three. Um, so in leap three, uh, you have collaborated with a partner to compare and contrast propaganda from the past and the present. And there's one small part of the project, you've done all this already, uh, the project I hope will be completed by um, midnight tonight and you've thought about meeting the criteria for evaluation, because that's how I'll be uh, grading your project. Um, but this part right here, step nine of this project is called reflect. I've sent you a short email 
asking you to reflect on the quality of the collaboration and the learning experience. I do want you to take that um, assignment um, seriously. Uh, a, a simple one sentence answer is probably not going to give me uh, the uh, opportunity to understand your learning experience and it's not going to give you the opportunity to reflect on your learning experience and that's of course the most important part of learning uh, after you uh, respond to my uh, my questions in the email then you'll see a link to a five question confidential survey to evaluate your own performance and the work of your partner so this is a required part of leap three so be sure that you complete that in the next day or two okay um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing these LEAP uh, 3s. I'm going to be putting them up on their own special page, so you're welcome to take a look at them and see the work of your peers. Uh, I think uh, many of you have completed some really interesting projects. But on to LEAP 4. LEAP 4 is your final assignment for uh, this class. Uh, we'll be doing a quiz uh, uh, next, next week. Uh, just to keep that in mind in terms of the readings, but here's what I want you to be starting to think about as you create propaganda. Of course, uh, we've learned this semester that propaganda can be used for beneficial or harmful purposes. And so we're going to put that to the test here with your Leap 4 experience. Um, in Leap 4, you apply what you've learned about propaganda to create two forms of beneficial propaganda for a current ongoing campaign at dosomething.org. You carefully document your propaganda mini campaign on your blog and write a reflective essay explaining how you applied key ideas and principles in your creative work as a propagandist and reflecting on what you learned. Think of Leap 4 as creating to learn. This is your opportunity to create a propaganda mini campaign as a way to demonstrate your ability to use what you've learned and to synthesize an understanding of some of the information and ideas that you've been thinking about and exploring this semester in the course. So really there are three learning expectations for LEAP 4. I want to give you the opportunity to apply specific ideas from the course in creating contemporary propaganda for a campaign or a social cause. I want you to experiment with creating propaganda using two different modes of expression and communication. And I want you to reflect on your strategy in developing a, prop, a propaganda mini campaign by applying concepts and insights from the course uh, to your learning experience. So here's what I'm expecting. You're going to first go to dosomething.org and choose a topic from among their current campaigns. Let's take a look at that now. DoSomething.org is a really interesting organization that uh, compiles um, different um, social causes and political campaigns. For example, then you might want to deal with issues of recycling uh, and uh, deal with issues of recycling. You might want to explore the topic of gun violence. You might want to address issues of um, blood cancer. Right, you might want to help people register to vote or address people's self-esteem or uh, take shorter showers or run a bone or deal with bone marrow uh, cancer or help people in Puerto Rico or save uh, the mascots and make, uh, oh, make every college campus tobacco free. Aha, uh -huh, interesting. So, what you're going to see is um, maybe 50 or more different campaigns. Uh, rather than focus particularly on the proposed action step, you know, some of them are kind of silly and superficial, taking just a short amount of time to complete. I'd rather you think about the issues, um, the, um, the issues that are behind these ideas, right? So uh, unfair and harsh discipline practices in schools, um, helping older people learn how to use their smartphones, um, menthol, uh, the additive that's used in tobacco. Um, and there are just lots and lots of them. So find 
uh, seed bombing, <laughs> right? Find a, find a topic that you can feel comfortable getting behind uh, and then create two forms of propaganda from the list below. You can choose to create a podcast, an infographic, a screencast video, an animation video, a series of images uploaded to Instagram, video of any format, including cell phone video, and or 15 original memes created by you and presented as a sequence of images with music. Uh, for each of these activities, I direct you to the Create to Learn website to learn more about the free and low cost digital tools that you can use to create those uh, forms. Now, in this project, you are free to have a collaborative partner. Uh, you are free to work with a class partner on the development of your mini campaign because the best creative ideas are often generated through collaboration and teamwork. But each student will still be responsible for creating their own propaganda artifacts. So if you and your partner work together, you'll create four artifacts, two that you'll be responsible for and two that your partner will res be responsible for. You'll post them up onto your blog and each of you will be responsible for writing your own independent uh, essay, right? So it's more of a creative collaboration at the, um, in the, at the conceptual level than at the execution level. I hope that's clear. I do want you to read over the criteria for evaluation, and we'll talk about that next week. And do notice, I'm going to be awarding a $50 Amazon gift certificate to the student with the best propaganda mini campaign. So, uh, and that means I'm using a little external reward. Uh, you, you can get an A and the $50 uh, gift card for what I determined to be the best propaganda campaign. Um, okay, so I think that, let me just make sure, I think I've kind of, oh, now I want to go back to, back to today, today's um, session. I think if you have any questions about that, you can tweet those questions to me. You can put the questions in the path right. Um, let's take a look at what we're talking about for next week. Our, our topic, oh, the best part of the course is here right? We're going to explore fake news, demagoguery, and the alt-right. We're going to do that for two weeks uh, this, uh, this uh, April, this week, and uh, this week's and next week, because the topic is just so important. Let's take a look at the path right and see what you're going to be doing. Okay, so let's see. We're going to scroll down to week 12. I'm sorry about that. Noise. This, I'm in the Airbnb this time, not a hotel. It's Washington hotels are so expensive. Uh, so this, but this is not the, this is not the best Airbnb. <laughs> ay, 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 Okay, here we go. So fake news, demagoguery, and the alt right. We consider the rise of populism and right wing nationalism, and the rise of conspiracy theories within the context of propaganda. What fun. Okay, so the biggest project that you're doing is called They Say, I Say on Fake News Demagoguery in the Alt-Right. It's worth 20 points. I'd like you to complete this before next week. It, it should be a lot of fun. So first of all, we're gonna frame up uh, reading and writing activities, scholarship, as a conversation, exploring this question. What is contributing to the rise of populism and right-wing nationalism and the rise of conspiracy theories as a type of propaganda? Right? So the whole activity is described in this collaborative slide deck. Okay? So um, perhaps I'll, I'll overview it for you here on the path right, and then we'll take a look at the slide deck. You're going to select one of the readings from the list that's provided. You can see that list here below. Four, uh, short, or four or five short articles uh, there. You're gonna choose one, read it carefully, and create two PowerPoint slides to share something that you learned from one of those articles. Then you're going out on your own to the open internet and find another high quality and relevant source that relates to what you have just learned and read. You're gonna read that and you're gonna create two PowerPoint slides using the they say, I say format. Be sure to create, use a, create a full citation for the material you 
uh, you uh, produce. We're going to work collaboratively to create this slide deck. So as you check, as you compose, check to see that your contribution is aligned with and extends upon the work of others. So you don't want to duplicate. You don't want to duplicate the same quotes, the same ideas, right? Let's take a look at the slide deck now. The slide deck uh, relies on this really cool concept called They Say, I Say, and it's a great uh, book by Gerald Graff and Kathy Birkenstein, really about this idea that um, scholarship is a conversation and that um, the people of the past have left ideas for us and we continue the conversation as we, as we learn about them. Uh, this video explains that concept really well. So before you go any further, uh, take um, five minutes to watch that video about they say, I say. And then you're going to enter the conversation. This is your work for the week. This duplicates what I just suggested to you today. Here's links to the readings. And here's the format that I would like you to use for composing your PowerPoint slides. Your PowerPoint, you'll create four PowerPoint slides, two for the assigned reading and two for the freely chosen reading, the reading of your choice. For each of those uh, um, PowerPoint slides, I want you to make sure you include a full citation. You see that right there? I want you to compose a headline and put your name here on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I want you to summarize paraphrase or use direct quotation from the reading and then below it I want you to provide your own interpretation and response to the ideas of the author that is essentially what scholarship is after all right we respond to the idea we, we we demonstrate we understand the ideas of others and then we respond to them ourselves uh, so you're going to do that with four times I've given you a model from Connor Fogelstrom he took the class last semester for his first two slides, he analyzed the essay called, Is the Alt-Right for Real? That's a New Yorker article. Notice that he gave it a title, The Power of Anonymity. He put his name, he put his citation at the top on the left-hand side. And notice at the right, he quotes from the article, and then he offers his own interpretation, right? And he does that four times. He does that... Uh, here, what is the alt-right? The power of anonymity. Then he goes and he finds another article from another source. And he selects a piece called The Alt-Right Branding War Has Torn the Movement in Two. Wow, fascinating. And he writes about the Steve Bannon connection. And using the same article, he goes a little bit deep on the idea of the alt-right ideology. You're going to copy and paste these slides and put your own work below. So you should produce four slides using that format. I think you're going to enjoy this activity. It's a, it's a really cool way to summarize and respond to the readings. And um, of course, I'll be making comments on your work in the margins as you go. So that's the main work for this week. But I'd also like you, since we're going to be talking about conspiracy theories, I'd also like you to find an example of a conspiracy theory that interests you and select some kind of artifact, a video, a web page, or an article. And then after summarizing your example briefly, analyze the conspiracy theory to answer these two questions. Does your example, uh, your conspiracy theory example, fit with the definitions of propaganda we've explored in this class? Why or why not? Some conspiracy theories might be considered propaganda, but others might not. And secondly, does it use the propaganda techniques that we've learned about? Why or why not? And I'd like you to put your response on the flip grid. So this is a short video commentary. It turns out my students have been collecting examples of propaganda for a long time. So you don't need to worry too much about the kids who posted in November. You guys will be posting in April. And of course, it is absolutely fascinating to see how many conspiracy theories there are. Um, so you're welcome to take a look at some of the uh, topics that have come up. Um, okay, so that's worth seven points, right?
So you are going to be thinking about your LEAP 4 final assignment. I suggest the first step is to go to do something and review the causes. Find a cause that you can, you know, you can get behind. Uh, and then I'll see you here for the synchronous class on April 18th. So, you know, that's about it. What I'd like to do to prove that you actually watched this video is, um, let's see now, you could say, uh, you know, uh, where is Renee, right? And um, let's see now, how, how, I guess, how, how will you answer? What's the best way to answer? Um, hmm. Yeah, you can tweet me a direct message saying, I know where you are. If you listen to this video, you'll know. All right, cool. See you next week. Bye-bye.